And what I've noticed is that you can actually get an infinite duration Avenging Wrath. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning to another Super Tease video. And Rep Paladins are getting even more bonkers in the War Within with their new hero talents, Herald of the Sun and the Templar. And in today's video, we're going to be covering everything that they're going to have to offer you, scoping from all forms of content in the game. And if you want to make sure that you're staying up to date with news related to World of Warcraft and the gaming industry, then smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Now, the first set of hero talents that I checked out was the Herald of the Sun. I focused on building my class around doing damage over time effects because this is a talent tree that focuses around that with Dawnlight being that Wake of Ashes is basically going to apply these little laser beams to each target that you hit with it and attach them to you and just cleave everybody down um, and that's going to be the main focus of it. Another main benefit of Herald of the Sun is that you'll gain access to Eternal Flame which is going to replace Word of Glory and give you a significant method of self-healing and self-sustain. So if you're doing like random battlegrounds or even rated battlegrounds, you're going to be really self-sufficient, doing monstrous amounts of just laser AoE damage um, and just absolutely crushing it and killing it. A lot of the other talents just focus on crit strike, just increasing your damage overall. I think some of the mo more, more interesting ones, at least visually, are things like Second Sunrise, where Divine Storm and Hammer of Wrath can cast a second time. There's a lot of effects like that in your baseline talent tree. So you can press Divine Storm and it's like a Wind Fury proc and just shoots out like 30 more uh, Divine Storms as well. And then also the ability to activate your Hammer of Wrath at any time and make it do 200% increased damage. So it just absolutely crushes and destroys everybody. Now I'm also playing a baseline talent that basically when I press Wake of Ashes, it's gonna activate my Avenging Wrath. And I don't know if this is a bug yet, so this might get nerfed because it's absolutely crazy what I'm about to show you when you're doing your rotation on like a training dummy here for let's say um, when you activate Wake of Ashes you're going to get Avenging Wrath and what I've noticed is that you can actually get an infinite duration Avenging Wrath which if that ends up being the case you're gonna play this 100%. You can play Crusade, you can start stacking that up all of the way, and just continue through your rotation. You'll see that my Avenging Wrath just keeps refreshing over and over while I'm doing monstrous amounts of AoE damage to anything that comes my way, proccing Hammers of Wrath that just chunky, chunky, eat up anything that comes near me, and my Avenging Wrath pretty much is limitless because when Wake of Ashes comes up, we're gonna be able to refresh it again, and honestly, that time it didn't hit exactly where it should have, but normally I've been able to maintain it with 100% uptime, um, and I mean, it's Still 100% uptime, we're just going to have to ramp the Crusade up again here onto this flow. But you're proccing Consecrations on the ground with the talent trees that I'm playing with my Blade of Justice here. So it's going to be spawning in damage over time effects. I'm going to be spawning in lasers. I'm going to try better, do a better job here on the next one of hitting more mobs with my Wake of Ashes. Because you can see this laser beam extending from this one right here. Look at all these Divine Storm procs, especially when you have Divine Purpose. We don't even know what the set bonuses are going to be. But look at these procs. You're just proccing endless amounts of Divine Storms onto your enemies. It's reminding me very much so of Legion. So we'll try and wake up ashes and hit more things here. So we get two laser beams coming out now from hitting another target with it. Three laser beams coming out now from hitting another target with it. And you could just run around with these laser beams and they're going to cleave anything that you run through basically. So any of these extra training dummies or these extra mobs or players, whatever you happen to be running through and cleaving. But you can see my Avenging Wrath at this point has basically almost just never fallen off. It's just almost 100% uptime, which seems absolutely crazy if you're just going to be running around with 100% uptime uh, Avenging Wrath while you're just proccing these massive hammers of wrath and you're spawning in these lasers and you're constantly just cleaving down any enemies, spawning in infinite, endless, divine storms. This talent tree feels very fun. It feels very fun. It feels like it's probably going to get very nerfed, um, especially considering the Avenging Wrath uptime, but it is very fun. And... Uh, I, I think this is going to absolutely crush it in Mythic Plus. I think if you're like a Mythic Plus Rep Paladin, this is going to be very enjoyable. You just go randomly pressing your buttons while everything starts glowing and lighting up on your screen, and you're just absolutely destroying the damage meter with holy damage and holy lasers like a, a shark with friggin' laser beams attached to their forehead, okay? So I, I expect that this build will be very good in Mythic Plus, probably good in Battlegrounds, Possibly good in arena or smaller, you know, target content where you're hitting less targets. Um, maybe into like double melee DPS. Uh, it could be, but maybe like, you know, 2v2 arena, maybe not as good. I feel like this is a build that's likely going to focus more around needing very many targets to hit. Although the Avenging Wrath uptime 
is highly appealing. Now, the next one, Templar, this is one that I feel like a lot of people initially really wanted to be good. It's just the word Templar and the association with it with Paladins is just so massive that like everybody really wants this to be good. And what this is going to be giving you is Wake of Ashes is replaced with Hammer of Light for 12 seconds after it is cast. And Hammer of Light calls down your enemy with Power of the Light, dealing 80,000 holy damage and 39,000 damage up to four nearby enemies, additionally calling down Empyrean Hammers from the sky. So it basically turns Wake of Ashes into starfall when you hit multiple targets and these hammers are just going to come down raining down and turn them into starfall so you're basically a boomkin this patch you got damage over time effect and laser beams coming out that's pretty boomkin and then you got stars or hammers raining down from the sky uh this is something i've noticed for a lot of classes that they're homogenizing they're taking mechanics that other classes have that other classes previously didn't have and then giving them to you i don't know if this isn't an attempt to try and balance the game um so that every class is basically the same i feel like that goal is still not going to be met and it could possibly be problematic depending on how far they start pushing uh the homogenization process but continuing through the templar tree because it's such an important one for you rep paladins out there hammer of light instantly calls down two empyrean hammers on your target so you just get immediate burst from it or for whom the bell tolls divine toll grants up to 100 percent increased damage to your next three judgments when striking only one enemy so you can see you can focus this a lot more around single target uh this amount is reduced by 20 percent for each additional target struck so if you want to go for that big massive aoe you're obviously gonna go zealous vindication if you want a small target group pulling single target you're probably gonna get the big judgment damage here so i'm gonna go for the starfall build see what it looks like shake the heavens after casting hammer of light you call down an empyrean hammer on a nearby target so you, here you go just more hammers raining down wrathful descent when empyrean hammer critically strikes 60 percent of his damage is also just gonna aoe and enemies hit by this effect deal five percent reduced damage so you can tell everything in these two talent trees aoe's red paladins are going to be breaking your your cc guys out there it, your cc is not surviving this this expansion your cc is just absolutely not surviving every class is aoe um sacrosanct crusade when you cast wake of ashes gain shield of vengeance at 10 percent effectiveness so you just get you know more tanky with this one as well this seems a lot more better focused for pvp or survival or solo content at least higher calling crusader strike hammer of wrath blade of justice extend the duration of shake the heavens so again focusing around hammer of wrath and crusader strike and blade of justice builds possibly to make sure that you're guaranteeing these constantly spawning and hammers could be good bonds of fellowship you receive 20 percent less damage from blessing of sacrifice and each time its target takes damage you gain four percent movement speed that could be really good with the talents where you get damage on your judgment through sacrifice um and then the other one un unrelenting charger divine steed lasts two seconds longer increases your movement speed by an additional 30 percent for the first three seconds probably not as good as the death knight's permanent on a mountain here but you are getting a little bit of pony love uh, endless wrath calling down an empyrean hammer has a 10 percent chance to reset the cooldown of hammer of wrath and make it be usable on any target regardless of their health so they did copy that over it does, it's not going to do 200 percent more damage but you are going to get the proccing hammer of wrath possibly from this casting judgment increases the damage of empyrean hammer though by 10 percent and multiple applications may overlap so this is again focusing real this is a more single target this is going to feel more aoe we're just going for the aoe with this round uh hammer fall templars verdict and divine storm call down empyrean hammers on nearby enemies while shake the heavens is active this effect calls down an additional empyrean hammer okay so you just even more hammers you're just that you're like the the hammer bro from uh super mario you're just gonna be <laughs> okay that's it that's what you're gonna be doing i suppose here on rep paladin in the war within undisputed ruling hammer of light applies judgment to its target as well and increases your haste there's a lot of focus around haste that i've noticed between these two builds Light's Deliverance, you gain a stack of Light's Deliverance when you call down an Empyrean Hammer. While Wake of Ashes and Hammer of Light are unavailable, you consume 60 stacks of Light's Deliverance, empowering yourself to cast Hammer of Light an additional time for free. So you can proc free. Okay, so this is going to be massive. This is going to be massive. I actually kind of wonder what the uptime on Avenging Wrath is going to be with this build as well. So let's just get in here, do some damage. Let's use Call the Heavens. Okay, so it's a slightly different animation. And now I'm assuming hammers are going to start falling from the skies. I do not see any hammers falling from the skies. I already got a reset on it. Oh, you have to cast it and then get holy power up to five, it looks like. Did we miss an opportunity there? I think I just missed an opportunity on our build. This is a little bit confusing. I don't see hammers falling from the sky. It kind of looks like the animation is just like a Templar's verdict. So not, not super excited about that. We definitely don't have infinite Avenging Wrath, which is a little bit, I think, a little bit worse than the, uh, the other build that was trying. Although it seems pretty decent. Okay. All right, let's get to five holy power because that was a little bit strange. Obviously, I messed that up a little bit. So if you're somebody new to the game here, you're probably going to mess it up a little bit as well. So we're at five. So Wake of Ashes, 
And now we get the big crack. Okay, that's that's the big crack. That's the big crack. And now we got the hammers coming in. I can see little animations flying through when you're using our Divine Storm as well on top of this. It's going to give us some burst damage. And we can see we're getting Light's Deliverance stacks as well. I think this is when our Holy Power Spenders are going to also start calling down hammers. But I think it needs to get to 60. So we got like this little kind of a time bomb going off that's going to just keep stacking up as we keep spending out as much Holy Power as we can and doing as much damage as we can. And we got our our avenge or got our wigger ashes, but you gotta make sure you got five holy power because you gotta double tap it. Oh, that thing looks good. That thing looks good. I like that. I like that. I like that. It's a big dunk, but it takes a huge build up to get to. Which in PvP, build up stacking cooldowns together could be really powerful. But in you know Mythic Plus, where maybe trash mobs are dead before you even get to the build up, I could see this one definitely being weaker um, than the uh, than the opposing one, the Herald of the Sun, at least when it comes to Mythic Plus. So we're still proccing our Avenger Wrath. We're about to get 60 stacks, so we can see what that's like. So we're at 60 stacks right now. We also so we get an instant free one. We can just pop it, and then we've also got a reset on it. So when we get to five uh, Holy Power here in a moment, we can use it again. We're just running out of generators, unfortunately. All right, we're at five. So you can use Wake of Ashes into the big boom. And then we get big combo, just cleaving everything. I will say the hammer animations from the sky is not super noticeable. Like, I can see it kind of procking over here on the judgment of that thing. But I really think that the hammers raining down from the sky need to be like Gilgamesh, where it's like a portal from the stars just calling in hammers of war onto their target. I'd really like the animation for that to be more visually appealing. So again, I think this one will probably be a bit better on PvP focus. It's a little more single target oriented. It's burst oriented. Has a bit more of a ramp, which is going to get more payout in PvP, where, again, players aren't probably going to be dead before you even get to the end of that ramp. And we also get the Shield of Vengeance when we use it. So we get like an extra defense bonus on this, which is going to be really good for PvP because then when that shield pops, it's also going to do damage to enemy targets. So definitely feel like Templar is more of a PvP build, more of a single target build. Herald of the Sun going to absolutely crush it in Mythic Plus and probably Battleground situations. Just seems so easy in the 100% Avenging Wrath uptime. That stuff's got to get looked at. But Red Paladin is looking pretty solid, I would say, overall relative to a lot of other classes. Again, I'd like some visual updates. I feel like for a lot of people, I don't know if you feel this way. Let me know in the comments down below. You really want the visuals to be, you know, fantasy inducing. So some specs have amazing visuals, right? Like Fire Mage and Warlock, summoning and demons and stuff like that. The Paladin one, I feel like could be better. Could be better. And we're still in alpha stage. So hopefully that is going to be the case. Maybe these are just filler and that's going to get better. And we'll be able to, you know, pump out content to you guys to show you when they update that type of stuff. So you can make sure that it is going to be the best for you. But other than that, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one.